today uh, as we discuss the National Climate Assessment, which was released today. And you know, there were uh, more than 300 authors from around the country who uh, contributed to the report, and several or all of them are here with us today. Uh, we want to make them available to you for one-on-one -on -one interviews uh, following just a few brief remarks, starting with uh, remarks from uh, the director of Scripps, Dr. Margaret Lennon. Thanks, Rob. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Margaret Leinen, Director of Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and today the White House released the third National Climate Assessment. It's a report that has the goal of enhancing our ability to anticipate, mitigate, and adapt to the changes that we already see and changes that are coming with, uh, uh, with climate. This was the work, as Rob said, of uh, about 300 authors from uh, universities like UC San Diego, from the private sector, uh, from research institutes, uh, from nonprofit uh, organizations, and from some government entities as well. Uh, at Scripps Institution of Oceanography and our partner up the hill, the NOAA Fisheries Lab, and other NOAA labs were uh, very important among the researchers that contributed to this assessment. Uh, they looked at the challenges that climate uh, change poses for the U.S. as a whole, but also for specific regions, like here in the Southwest or uh, in the Pacific uh, Islands. We want to give the authors that are here today a chance to share the latest science on which this climate assessment was based. Uh, and it, I think it will show you how critical it is that cities, states, regions, and the U.S. as a whole uh, place ourselves in a position uh, to have the best chance to mitigate, adapt uh, to the changes that we see. And that's going to take as much knowledge as we can develop. And that, of course, is our role here at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. We certainly face the threat of rising sea level and coastal erosion, inundation that comes with it. We'll be talking about that at a national conference here tomorrow. Uh, more intense heat waves, uh, more, uh, more drought, like the one that we've just ex experienced here in California, uh, extreme weather, uh, things that affect uh, every aspect of our life, whether that's our property on the shore, whether it's our ports, our water supply, our water quality, agriculture, public safety. Scripps uh, Institution of Oceanography and our scientists are working with city governments, state resource managers, and federal agencies to develop strategies for adapting to climate change and mitigating its effects. Many forward-looking agencies, whether they're state and local or, or uh, government agencies, are already d well down the road in terms of creating plans and creating strategies for dealing with these threats. The Pentagon has referred to them as a threat multiplier that also affects our national security. The first thing those uh, agencies and the constituents they serve need is knowledge, and again, that's what the contributors to America's National Climate Assessment uh, have provided, and that's where they will come in in the future as well. So we look forward to you getting a chance to meet them. At this time, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Kat Coleman, to the podium. Kat is the Deputy Secretary for Ocean and Coastal Policy with California Natural Resources Agency, and she's been a key ally in many of the things that we're have been doing here at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Kat? And thank you, Margaret. Um, the value of the assessment extends far beyond the information and resources contained in the report. The process that generated it has laid the groundwork for robust, ongoing integration of climate information into decision making. California has been privileged to participate in the development of the assessment, which is drawn on an impressive breadth and depth of high quality science. And I want to thank Scripps and other, other contributors for their participation. 
The approach of developing a sustained assessment process aligns very well with California's integrated approach to climate adaptation and mitigation. Coordination across existing institutions and networks is crucial to delivering needed information and in supporting capacity building to protect public, ecosystem, and economic health. California has been a leader in reducing carbon emissions, and we are now turning our full attention to how we must adapt to climate change. The state will shortly be releasing its report, Safeguarding California, that lays out the steps we must take to respond to climate change. I can speak to our response on the coast. We are working with local planners to provide them the tools they need to anticipate and respond to sea level rise and extreme weather events. We are also tackling ocean acidification in partnership with Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia. Most importantly, the assessment draws upon the considerable energy and capacity in state, tribal, and local governments, as well as the private sector to effectively translate science into action. The science is clear that we are obliged to act now. Our future depends on our willingness to take action now to mitigate risk. The ocean is already rising, and we know this is just the beginning. This report is a call to arms for us to all work together so we can maintain thriving communities and ecosystems in California and in the nation. Thank you. And I believe I now introduce one of our Thanks, Kat, and uh, good to be here. Uh, Margaret and Kat pretty much talked about what I was going to say, but um, one of the, I think one of the keynote parts of all of this is the development of uh, relationships uh, that have been strengthened, such as with the state of California, and actually with local agencies. Um, the, it turns out that the communities in San Diego have uh, actually been quite active in developing action plans for climate change in, in the region, and a lot of that is owing to the work that the state has supported and uh, has been stimulated by uh, federal support through uh, regionalized climate science. It's, it's interesting that this problem is, is really a global problem, but it, it has uh, essentially a fingerprint that's different in every region. And part of the challenge is, uh, is actually working out how those, those regional and local fingerprints uh, are impacting us and how we can prepare for them. Um, one, of the, one of the hallmarks of this, uh, this latest assessment, as Margaret mentioned, is the fact that it's drawn in not only uh, university and government scientists, but also the private sector in, uh, in actually acting and planning for climate change. The fact that uh, this is an ongoing effort, uh, the assessment is, is recognized as not being a, a snapshot, but actually a, essentially a living process because of the ongoing nature of the, uh, the information that we're gathering and the amount of learning that we still have to do. Uh, there's going to be generations of scientists that will take this on as, as uh, the years go by and the decades come. So uh, it's been an interesting activity and there's, there's certainly a lot of uh, symptoms and uh, lessons we can take in, in the California region and I suspect that we'll be talking about that. So with that, Rob, do I turn it over to you again? Yes, you do. Okay.